I'm Abigail Doherty. We're coordinators of community development in the Children's of Alabama Foundation. We work with partners and programs like Extra Life that raise money for our hospital. Extra Life is a grassroots fundraising program of Children's Miracle Network Hospitals that empowers gamers to do what they love while raising money for their local children's hospital. Today, we're talking with a new but passionate Extra Life participant who has a special connection to Children's. He's an employee here. Dr. Byron Lai is an assistant professor in the Division of Pediatric Rehabilitation Medicine. He is part of the UAB and Lakeshore Foundation Research Collaborative. Welcome, Byron. We're talking about your passion for gaming today and what made you decide to join Extra Life and raise funds for Children's of Alabama. Can you start by just telling us about yourself? Sure, and thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is Byron Lai, and I actually did my master's in adapted physical activity at California State University, Northridge. And then I came on over here about uh, 10 years ago to do my uh, PhD in rehabilitation medicine. And so I honestly, I've been at UAB ever since. And then I joined Children's about a year and a half or two years ago doing a postdoc specifically in rehabilitation medicine, and that's where I've been ever since. Uh, there's a really big need for the kind of work we're doing right now. Um, we actually did a research study examining the impact of COVID-19 on adolescents with cerebral palsy and their families in our state. And the unfortunate thing is that there's really two huge issues. The first is that exercise behavior, or therapeutic exercise if you want to put it that way, has really declined since the start of the pandemic. And that's obvious, right? Because, you know, all of us have been in quarantine, not able to go out as much. But unfortunately, those low levels of exercise behavior hurt children with disabilities more than they would their peers without disabilities. And so before the pandemic, their levels of exercise behavior are actually already lower than their peers. But unfortunately, now with the pandemic, we found that that's at an even more alarming level. And the second thing is unfortunately mental health. Just like exercise behavior, a mental health was a lot worse before the pandemic in children with disabilities, but now that's exacerbated too, or worsened. And so I'm really excited to be here at Children's to be able to find innovative and enjoyable ways to engage these kids in therapeutic exercise behavior that's hopefully not only physically beneficial, but mentally beneficial. Um, and very excited to work with Extra Life. I, I love gaming. Uh, my passion is gaming. Uh, one of the questions they're gonna ask me is certainly what I do in my free time, and I love gaming. When I, As soon as I get off home from work, I jump straight on one of my gaming consoles or my phone, and I am gaming until, until I sleep, essentially. Very passionate about gaming, and I'm glad to be able to do that for as part of my work. Can you tell us a little bit just about g your gaming as a hobby and, you know, what are you playing right now? What systems do you play uh, on? Gaming as a hobby. I grew up, you know, when I was young, I'm, I'm 35 now, but when I was a kid, you know, the first big game systems came out, Nintendo, right? Super Nintendo. So I, I've been through the whole ringer of video game consoles. But right now, uh, I am very passionate about virtual reality. I think that's the future. It's immersive. It's fun, it's engaging, and you can make friends a lot easier since it's not just typing. I mean, you know, you can make friends chatting in Discord, which is awesome, uh, but when you're able to see some kind of avatar and a voice with it, it just really helps. So right now, virtual reality gaming is my passion, but I've played all sorts of games. I've played, I mean, right now I'm playing first-person shooters in virtual reality, but that's not what I'm confined to. I've played everything from single player games on like a PlayStation, Xbox, but I really am most passionate, I think, about multiplayer games. I just love, personally, I just love the competitive piece of it. So when I was younger, I actually uh, competed on uh, the amateur level uh, in tournaments and all that kind of thing. Okay. Like Counter-Strike, if y'all remember that, that's kind of long time ago now. I guess <laughs> people still play it and it's still a big eSport. Uh, but I I'm too old to be playing that game. But right now, it's virtual reality. And you have just started playing for Extra Life, right? You just signed up as an Extra Life participant, and you're live streaming on Twitch for Extra Life. Can you tell us a little bit about what that's been like? Oh, totally. So it's been really fun and just exciting to be part of this collaborative with Extra Life. We just started streaming probably only seriously for like four or five days. 
and we've already got about $700 in donations, which is exciting. When people understand that you're passionate about helping children through gaming, and they're playing the same game that you're going to give to the, you know, the, the patients or just the, the people who are involved with our network, uh, they're just so passionate to share their experience they're having with, with the kids. And so it's been really fun streaming. Uh, we're hoping to set up a more serious streaming station at our lab at Lakeshore Foundation. It's been really fun and exciting to kind of share the work we're doing, not just with our people here at Children's, but with the gaming community. Yeah, so Jamie and I are pretty new to the gaming world and kind of rookie gamers, if you will. And you obviously have a lot of knowledge and a lot of passion for gaming. Do you mind talking kind of like when you realized you could combine your hobby with your passion for like what you might do as a career? When did you decide that that would be something you could do? That wasn't until recently, honestly. It kind of just worked out that way. So my background has always been exercise for people with disabilities. Now that's technically therapeutic rehabilitative exercise uh, and the way I like to see that is on a spectrum so a kid might come to the hospital for rehab and they might go to the home and so there's this long continuum from the hospital to the home and there's many different sectors in the hospital too uh, it can go actually all the way to the intensive care unit that's I would say is the beginning and then it can go to acute care and then it go to inpatient care and then outpatient care and then discharge to the home or the community so there's this whole kind of spectrum. And I've actually just been a rehab, I don't want to call myself a rehab doctor because I'm not an MD doctor, but a scientist in therapeutic exercise in this rehabilitation medicine field. And gaming didn't really get into that until I started at Children's. When you really look at the literature, uh, there's not a lot of evidence-based therapeutic exercise programs for children with disabilities. Now what I mean by evidence-based is I mean that uh, types of exercises that have strong evidence to support their use to improve health or uh, physical health or mental health. Now the only enjoyable methods there are of doing that for say a, a child who uses a wheelchair is an arm bike. Mm. And treadmills and stationary cycles aren't my thing. Yeah, I, I that don't could get boring. Yeah, <laughs> yeah kind of mundane. <laughs> yeah, and so there's really nothing out there for children with disabilities except active video gaming. And that's really the only other enjoyable uh, kind of form of therapeutic exercise for them, aside from dance. Dance actually has some too. The active video gaming scene has really been dominated by the Nintendo Wii. Um, and you, everyone yeah. knows what that Love is. Love a good I think, Wii these moment. Days. Love <laughs> right? a good Wii tournament. Yeah. yeah. It was around for about a decade, maybe a little less. Now, those are fun. I just didn't think those were immersive enough personally. So I never purchased one. It didn't get me off of the computer. So I was actually a computer gamer. Uh, console gamer as well, like okay. PlayStation, Xbox. I did do World of Warcraft and those kind of online multiplayer games when I had more time. But nothing could get me off the computer, even though I love both exercise and video gaming, even though the Nintendo Wii's were there. But as soon as this virtual reality gaming came out, active gaming particularly, I just couldn't go back to the computer. Yeah. So I I was playing like, uh, you know, the traditional Call of Duty and those kind of things on the computer. Mm -hmm. I now have not touched my computer for years, uh, a couple of years because of this uh, virtual reality gaming. That's pretty scene. compelling. Wow. That's compelling. And I'm very shocked that you didn't own a Wii. Like, uh, growing up, I had a <laughs> Wii and I just kind of thought that was just the movement of technology. And so it really surprises me that someone who was really into gaming doesn't, you know, didn't mm -hmm. have like the same things I thought I was really advanced with. We so. weren't hardcore enough. We weren't hardcore well, enough. I, I didn't buy it, but my family had it. I mean, I had one Definitely. in the household. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It just wasn't mine. When I was a kid, the first virtual reality kind of gaming, the promise for it was this thing you kind of like, if you put it on a desk and it has like this like goggles and you put your face in these goggles okay. and then it was supposed to be, oh, you virtual reality and you have a controller under the goggles and you're like uh -huh. looking into a plane. Mm -hmm. But it was, the graphics were not good enough. And so, you know, the technology wasn't there. And you never so, felt like you were fully in it. Yeah. And I think that was in the late nineties, if I remember, or early two thousands. And then the technology never caught up until now, and it's nice to see that that's really kind of grown. And I wish I was a kid now so I could restart <laughs> my gaming career. Yes. Because yes. gaming, soon you're going to have just glasses on your face, and you're going to be immersed in a completely 
uh, virtual, we call it a metaverse. So like if you've seen the movie Ready Player One, that's mm-hmm. actually not far in the future. Wow. wow. I mean, uh, recently yeah. I've seen, I think it's Facebook and Ray-Ban are teaming up to do like um, kind of a GoPro situation, but within like the specs of the glasses. And so I could see where A, B, C, like that just all connects together and it's coming. Yeah. You know, say what you want about Facebook. I have, you know, a little bit of concerns too, but they have transformed the virtual reality space. They are the ones who pioneered the singular gaming device or gaming console, whatever you want to call it. Head-mounted display is the technical term that transformed virtual reality. It's called the Oculus Quest. Uh, the reason why that is so innovative is because of its cost. Mm-hmm. It is the first time that virtual reality was uh, reachable as an affordable for even myself. Uh, like before that, you had to have a $2,000 headset. Well, like, let's be honest, like a $1,200 headset, but then also a $2,000 gaming computer, at least to have a really good, high-quality experience. Mm -hmm. Now, you can buy the headset for just $300, and, you know, you might need a couple hundred dollars for games, but then that's it, and maybe another couple hundred for accessories, because it's not the most comfortable. (laughs) But still, like, that alone is huge, because now we're actually able to use it in therapy. Like, we were never able to use it in therapy before. So much more access. Mm -hmm. That is great. It feels like we're in a a really good time with gaming technology to start bringing it into the hospital setting. That's really cool. Yeah, I've learned even more about you and gaming than I did before we sat down to talk today. So all very cool things. Thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us and share with our Extra Life participants a little bit about your personal life and your career here at Children's. We do have big things happening here at Children's, and you're a part of it, Byron, and we can't wait to share that with our Extra Life participants. So if you've made it this far in the podcast, this is part one of a two-part series with Dr. Byron Lai. Please keep an eye out for part two with Jamie, Byron, and Abigail, (laughs) where we will dive deeper into a big announcement coming for our Extra Life community. If you aren't on our Discord channel, visit childrensofalabamaextralife.com, where you can find a link to our Discord and other information about Extra Life.